everybody, it's time to LOL. Listen out loud, that is. It's time for Anime Jam Session with DJ Ranma S, Mako-chan, and Ari Rockefeller. Hey, everybody, welcome to Anime Jam Session, episode number 527. We are that podcast that talks about anime, games, conventions, the fandom, geek stuff, and everything in between. I'm DJ Ron Mess. I'm Ari Rockefeller. And I am Mako-chan. And apologies for the little slip-ups earlier. It seems OBS Studio decided to crash on me, so thankfully I was able to bring everything back up. And we hadn't even started the podcast. Thank God for that. So, you know. Oh, God. Anywho... How is everybody doing tonight? This podcast has been a production of Anime Jam Session. Good night, everybody. That's it. Good night. No fanboys and fangirls were hurt, maimed, shot, electrocuted, or pistol whipped in this episode. Yeah, and for now, some the OBS views, did opinions, a real and thoughts expressed on the show do not reflect the staff or the network as a whole. But we're still right, damn it! For transcripts of this episode, start typing. Check us out at AnimeJamSession.com oh, like and VogNetwork.com like for more information man. about us and other programming. Yep, and we just Jam lost it. Came back up. Can you cut out the outro music, please? Yeah, that, uh... What music? There's nothing playing right now. I hear we're, we're the outro the music. Oh. Yeah, we're hearing the outro. Oh, wait, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Oh, right. Wait. No, it's not playing. Now it's not. It it really, but it wasn't though. No, it was. Yeah. Santa Beery heard it too. Then how the hell did I not hear it? <sighs> I have no idea. I, I'll have I'll have to um, I'll have to check something on the back end and see what's going on. So, just blame Twitch and yeah. Amazon. Yeah. Yeah. I, Everything I, is their fault tonight. Mm-hmm. Like, like that's different from any other night. Well, no, but with all the issues, it's very easy to blame them tonight. And I'm all about blaming them, so why not? It's, yeah. <clears throat> oh, man. We are live tonight, week of December 7th, 2021, right here on Twitch TV. Jesus, where does the time go? Where does uh, the week and the month go? Jeez. <sighs> it is what it is. So we're live this week. We're here live on Twitch for, uh, every Tuesday from 9 to 10.30 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. You can catch us here every week at Twitch TV slash Anime Jam Session. And we're also part of the Voice of Geeks Network. And you can find them at vognetwork.com. And they also stream here on Twitch at Twitch TV slash VOG Network. And don't forget to come hang out with us in our Discord at VOGNetwork.com slash Discord. Every show that's a part of the Voice of Geeks Network has their own channel, so come through and hang out and talk. If you come into ours, we've been talking about how good uh, live-action Cowboy Bebop was. So, And as in regards to these tech issues, C. DeBerry says, yeah, their systems went down for our West Coast team today, but I didn't lose a moment, damn it. Trust me, I understand... Um, at my job, we have, we have office 365. So if Microsoft servers go down, we're kind of fucked, <laughs> but the redundancy of their service is we still can get shit done. So it ain't that bad. So, <sighs> so hopefully by the time that we're actually on, now that we're on so late, maybe by now, all of the issues with Amazon is kind of fixed for the most part you know so hopefully we can only hope yeah yeah because i i had read earlier you know that the server that they were having some issues but i just didn't think twice about it i was like oh oh well it's not like i got an email from twitch saying you know the site site's temporarily down you know what i'm saying uh, so let, let, let's get let's get into the thicket of things ari how was your week how was your day uh, it's yeah, I've been pretty pretty busy since uh, last I was on. Mm-hmm. Uh, well, for starters, today was payday, and all that holiday pay and overtime that I worked over the holidays 
I mean, it was the fattest paycheck I've had in a long time, so yeah. I'm very grateful for that. Good, good. And I'm still doing overtime and that sort of stuff anyway, but mm-hmm. uh, I'm not sure if I told you about it, but I had also uh, had the fire department here at my apartment complex, and it's at least mostly my fault. What did you do? Well, I see, one night I was cooking, I was making talk, and I just figured, I'll have some leftover tortillas, I'll make my own nachos. And uh, I got I got them from this place, it's a tortilla familia, real good OG shit. Mm-hmm. And uh, what happened was, I just set the cooking oil up too high, and uh, ended up just scorching them, because, Ooh. yeah, and it just filled up my entire apartment with smoke, and as I was you know, opening the windows and turning on the fans, or whatever, the fire alarm went off for the building. Oof. And, uh, you know, it, it took them a little bit, but, but they figured out, you know, where the smoke was coming from. But, you know, I managed to kill the heat and not start frying anything again. So it was still embarrassing, even though, you know, nothing got, nothing got caught fire or, uh, you know, nothing was destroyed. It's all good. But, <clears throat> I, I talked with the landlady and she's the other day, and she said, "Oh, by the way, I was supposed to stop by and get pictures of the place for, uh, you know, insurance purposes, because every time the fire department comes, they get charged for it." Mm. Well, that is true, yeah. And they were, tr- and she was trying. My landlady was trying, you know, to not have to pass the charges off to me, mm-hmm. or at least the building itself, and get the insurance to cover it because there was ultimately no damage. And right. I heard that I'm like. Oh, fuck, I better not get thrown out for this. So, I spent, like, the whole day before she came over just, like, cleaning the place, which I, which, you know, my, I hadn't actually done in a while because, you know, I was, I was like, I'll just get in this loop in my head, like, you gotta clean up this place. I know, we'll do it. I am. What's stopping you? I don't know. It, it, it It's like, I was just like, you know, stalling out like a car, like an old fucking car, mm-hmm. you know. I get that. But, yeah, I had to, you know, scrub the bathroom and the kitchen especially. I had it like, underneath the stove was especially bad. Even worse, because it's an electrical one. And I had bought a whole bunch of new cleaning supplies for it, and like, oh, look at these, like, like, Mr. Clean Magic Erasers, I went, like, a four-pack, I went through three of them in ten minutes. Mm-hmm. But yeah, I got it up to you know back to square one, and uh, yeah, you know, she was like, she was really cool with it. She was like, like, uh, like ah, that's fine. Just you know, took a picture here and there, and like, she was actually more impressed that like I had a stand mixer than anything else. Mm. And that's when she told me that you know she's gonna try to you know get the insurance cut. you get the fire department off our backs and not you know make us pay for it. And I told I totally get that. Lighter note, I did get most of my Christmas shopping done. I just have one more person to really buy anything for. Oh, okay. I'm going to mail your stuff, your your guys' stuff out in a little bit. Well, within the next day or so. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm actually in the process of, like, give, putting everything in the gift boxes and hoping and praying I don't have to wrap any packages and then figure out how, how often am I going to the post office to mail shit. And it's like... My whole week got kind of thrown off this week. Not for a bad reason, though, but I'll get into that later. But, you know. So, yeah, yeah. I'm not going to get thrown out any, anywhere anytime soon. Uh, Ari, I need you to do me a favor. I need you to disc- I need you to hang up from the call and then, cu- and then so I can pull you back in because you are out of sync. Okay. Right, so he is off the call. All right, and now I'm going to bring him back in. Uh, participants, bring him back in. Live feed, boys and girls, and we'll turn his camera. Did you miss me, on. people? Well, there we go. Ugh. Good. There we go. Everything is back the way it should be. 
<sighs> but yeah, that's how things have been going for me. Mm. Marco, how was your week? How was your day? Um, packing. <laughs> mm. Uh, yeah, I actually have taken off the next two Fridays just so I have extra time to pack. And yeah, that's, that's basically my life. Uh, I have been dealing with packing and I've been dealing with Damien trying to crawl up my ass. Mm. He woke me up again last night. That's why I am so freaking tired tonight. He decided that uh, he really wanted to sleep on my chest. Mm. So I woke up with him trying to climb onto me. And he's like 16 pounds mm -hmm. trying to climb onto my chest as I'm sleeping. Um, yeah, that didn't go very well. Needless to say, I woke up. I was going to say, did you wake up to seeing his face or your ass in front of you? No, um, where, where he was trying to climb, like he just puts down his entire weight on one paw. Mm. So it's 16 pounds of pressure, like on well, my like, neck. Like that. Yeah, yeah. And, and, and he's got his murder mittens out all the time. So as this he's was pushing, an assassination attempt. That's yes, what this was. exactly. Exactly. Um, <laughs> Ranma was here for Thanksgiving and mm -hmm. the amount of times that Damien was trying to crawl on me and basically hit the middle of my neck um, and like push down right on my trachea yeah. um, choking me yeah so, so this is what I deal with with the cat trying to lay on me at night because he's a cuddle whore and misses me during the day But yeah, I mean, other than that, I have been trying to put together a list of Christmas gifts to buy everybody on Thursday when I get paid. Mm -hmm. I have purchased exactly one gift so far. And I'm hoping because it's coming from overseas, I did not realize it was coming from overseas, um, but I'm hoping it actually gets here in time. Did you find um, it through Amazon? No. Oh, okay now so yeah it's 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 gonna be yeah it's gonna be an interesting couple of weeks mm -hmm. i've basically got two weekends left to pack before the holidays and everything goes to shit yeah i i get that and, and the thing is when i go when i go buy stuff online if the site looks like a cookie cutter site i'm like yeah it's being drop shipped from china so no yeah so i mean it's i've already gotten the notification that it shipped I got that at the end of last week, so I'm pretty sure it should be here. It's very small, so it's not going to be, you know, packed away with a bunch of crap. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. It, it's, it's, it's a fun week so far. I'll just send you, I'll just mail your gift out to you, like, overnight, so I won't have to worry Wait, about don't even, getting it a different... That's a little expensive. Just two-day shipping is fine. Here, yeah, you don't. You know as I long mean. as it, yeah, as long as it gets out by the end of this week, I should be fine. Here, here, yeah, I got tomorrow off, so I got I have plenty of time to send shit out. Yeah, here's yeah, here's, that's fine. Here's the thing, people. The post office says by the 18th, and it'll get there. Look, send your shit by the 14th. That way, it'll be there by Christmas. Because if you're going out on the 18th, there is a good chance it is not going to get there by Christmas. I have sent stuff out like around that time and it shows up like an extra, a week or two after, you know, I'm just like, whatever at this point. So, you know, I say nothing of uh, the gift I sent Patty uh, Mako last year. And uh, when did it end up showing up? I don't even remember. Mm. It was like weeks after Christmas. Yeah. La last year, last year was horrible. Yeah. Cause they, they were just coming back from, COVID and everything I where I go to uh, my post office is a hub and it's still not back to regular hours yet so see I'm I'm not near a hub see so if what I generally will do is I'll pack up whatever I'll pack my back my packages if they're already prepaid envelope prepaid everything I'll just drop them off at the mail room at my job 
If not, I will just go down to 34th Street to Penn Station and go over to the post office there and just handle my business there, which I generally will do, you know, so. Because honestly, it's a lot more convenient for me to do that. And now that I know there is another post office nearby, and usually during my downtime on lunch, I'll just take a jaunt over there, drop off a couple packages and come back and just keep track of all the shipping uh, tracking numbers. So as for my weekend day, I just start doing all of my Christmas shopping for the most part. Everybody is done except for one person and they already know they're getting a gift card. So I'm going to go through Amazon, print it out, slap an anime character on it, put it in the envelope and send it on its merry little way. That's it. We're, we're golden with that. Um, and it's funny as I am buying stuff, you know, I'm like, Oh, I'll get this for me. I think for every gift I bought somebody, I bought myself a gift. So, <laughs> and I think that's more than fair. So, I went and got my booster shot on Saturday, and I can't, unfortunately, I can't shoot electricity from my fingers yet, but I think tomorrow is the cutoff date, so we'll find out. But what happened was, I was planning to go on Friday, but I forgot my card, a.k.a. Um, multi Vaccine passport. Multipass. Multipass. <laughs> so... I left it here, and I realized by the time I get home and come back, they would have been closed. So I got up, went to Rite Aid. They didn't have any appointments. I went over to Coney Island Hospital. Oh, I missed them by 15 minutes. So I said, you know what? Let me do the rest of my shopping and pick up stuff and then head on my merry little way, you know. And while I was out, I found something for Mako. So that's sitting in a box behind me. <laughs> yeah. Oh, I and, uh, by the way, you know... You don't get electricity right away. You usually just get like start feeling like raw mana building up, at, like, in like in your body. That mm-hmm. that's when you like shape it into like electricity, fire, whatever. That works. And I also found out that Funko does um, coal, so I got her. So Mako, you got a Funko pop of coal, so because <laughs> you're naughty since day one. Anywho, so I- it, it is not the first time. That you have gotten me coal for Christmas. Yep, I know. <laughs> I know. I know. At least you guys are being, you know, joking about it, not, you know, malicious. Oh, we're, no, I was being malicious, but I was still being funny about it. <sighs> but um, Never change you two. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so when I got to the mall to pick up my stuff, I realized the mall is on the same street. As to where I have to go to get my uh, my booster. So I'm like, I'll take the bus and go. I get there. There's a long line and I'm cursing up a storm. And I try to explain to the woman, I had an appointment yesterday. But I left my card at home. So that I get stuck on the line. I'm a firm believer of, if you missed your appointment. And you can show proof that you did. You should be able to get on the line for appointments and go about your way. So, two, I went through it two hours later. Done. All of that. No side. I felt zero side effects. No nothing. So. I figure, you know, I already bought the Pedialyte. I might as well just keep it in the fridge and save it for a con. So. What? Sorry, while you were doing that, I was just buying myself some displays for myself. <laughs> Spruce up the place. Mm, no, no, I Marco kind of. What she kind of went hushed up. I was also like, "What?" You know. But just any- because I'm quiet doesn't mean I'm actually saying something. That means you're plotting some shit. Well, yes, plotting shit. See, there you go. So that- scheme, scheme, scheme. <laughs> Always. So there was that, and then yesterday I hung out with Lexi and Chrissy and Lexi's friend Peachon, and we had we went out for Japanese food. So that was fun. We were going to uh, go to Ichiran, but number one, I gave Chrissy the wrong address due to my fat thumbs. And if she, <laughs> yeah, if she had gotten there, you know, on time, we would be able to get on the line and not be caught. Not because they cut they cut the line early because they close early. So, but we still found a hole in the wall Japanese place, and it was fun. And then this morning was a bit of night from hell. You probably can't tell behind me, but all of my stuff. Is kind of sitting behind me. So 
this morning as I was showering, getting dressed, and all that for work, I hearing like this water dripping, and I couldn't figure out where the fuck it was coming from. I'm like, maybe it's. I'm thinking maybe that pipe burst, if y'all remember from like two, three years ago. So I went to go grab my book bag, and the strap was wet. I was like, fuck. I go inside the storage room here, open the door, turn on the light. Lo and behold, floor is wet. When you go inside, there are two pieces of wood that's planks that, that you step on first. So, you know. So, I come out. I drop my bag. I text work saying I'm running late. I go up, go around to the front of the house, and I let the neighbors know what's going on. I'm like, y'all got to do something about this now. So, here I am going into the corner over here, pulling all of my stuff out to see how much damage. Very minimal. The only thing in damage that I lost was a comic book box. But the comics inside are intact. So. Thank God for that. So. No, I'm going to I'm going to change my order on something. So, you know, I'll get to that in just a sec. So I move everything out and they tell me they're going to fix it. It'll be done by Thursday. So we'll be on water shifts. Lovely. I go to work. I come back. As I come back home, as I'm walking down the walkway, I, I discover that there's a, um, the old water heater is sitting outside. I come inside, there's a brand new water heater set up. The downside is the carpeted area of my kitchen is wet from the, from the, from it, but I don't care. I have paper, I have paper bags absorbing it and everything is fine. So what I ended up doing today was I ended up ordering um, brand new comic bins, but these are the type that are waterproof and damp proof and all that. And I'm like, I'll use that. But then I realized I'm putting them into the storage closet back here. So after this show, I'm going to cancel that order and just order regular comic book bins. Just redo everything and just throw them into the back of the closet. Cause I know back there is safe. So after the show tonight, after I do all of the edits, I have to go through all the stuff that I pulled and organize everything and put it away. I have two shelves up here full of plushies that are going to have to come down and go into one of my storage bins so I can put the rest of my DVDs up and stuff. That's going to be fun. So that's been my week and my day. Now, let's get into some uh, housekeeping. Uh, don't forget, every episode of Anime Jam Session, except for last week's, uh, due to some serious audio issues, last week's episode is not available on YouTube, nor is it available on our on for podcasts. You can watch it on our Twitch stream, but that's just about it. I just couldn't fix it. So I could hear Mako-chan perfectly fine, but somewhere in there, the audio levels in and out were kind of screwed, so I couldn't hear it. So, whatever. But, um, now that we got that all settled and taken care of, don't forget to head over to youtube.com slash anime jam session. Click on podcast VODs. You will find every single episode of, of our podcast from this year available. And don't forget to check out the VOG shop, uh, the pro shop at vognetwork.com slash shop. I believe it's down temporarily because they're moving to a new platform because fuck Streamlabs. And don't forget the Anime Jam Session uh, t Christmas special is December 21st, 2021 here at 9 p.m. Uh, Koi will be joining us. Hopefully Ichigo and Wild Spice will be joining us. It's going to be very chill this year. We're just going to talk, talk like holidays and stuff like that we're just gonna trade story we're just gonna chill out and relax and just have a good time that, that's all it is so and for upcoming conventions uh don't forget uh first con of the year for us looking like it'll be zenkai con march 25th to the 22nd 2022 in lancaster pennsylvania let me put that down on the list so i don't forget there we go now we're gonna get into the part of the show that y'all really enjoy uh geek roundtable <laughs> This is where we talk about the geek year aspects of our of our of our weekend day and kind of share off some cool stuff. So, what you got for us, Ari? 
Uh, it's nothing too spectacular. One of the uh, T-shirts I ordered hadn't arrived yet, mm. or I just haven't checked my mail. But I did order the order this uh, nice little chopstick set from a pl- from a place I saw on Facebook. Oh, okay, nice. It's it's from a Kansoka Soka Design, a nice uh, new small business. And uh, huh. Leave us an honest review for a one-year 10% off discount code. I, I just noticed that just now. Oh, okay, cool. Uh, I haven't gotten a chance to use them yet, but, you know, have a nice little box that comes in. That's nice. I know it's nothing too special, but it made me, it, you know, lighten my day. I wouldn't say that now. I mean, come on. But, uh, I guess, so, like, who, who's next? <laughs> Um, Mako-chan is next. Um, yeah. Uh, packing and reading smut. That That's my geek round table. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I, truly a woman of culture. I know yeah, I, I mean, I, 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 the only thing I can think of is last Wednesday I watched the tree lighting in uh, the city. Rockefeller on, Center. Yeah, on TV. <laughs> that that's that's legit the only thing different than my normal that I did. And I completely forgot that Annie Live was Thursday, so now I have to try and find it. Annie what? Live was last Thursday. What are you t- what's Annie Live? Annie, the play. Oh live. live. It's on Peacock. The I figured that. Yeah. I just I have to find it streaming. I just I just forgot. I said I was going to watch it. And I totally forgot. So I'm going to have to yeah, sit down and watch it. Thursday, I crashed. I was so freaking tired. I from from my so I will tell you this now. The Annie musical looks a hell of a lot better than the Annie with Jamie Fox because that movie was was horrible. Mm. So also, as we're right, right now, my DVR is recording or just finished recording live in front of a studio audience where they redo classic shows with up with an updated cast. This this one was the facts of life and different strokes. Kevin Hart as Arnold. I I can't wait. I can't wait to watch that this weekend. Oh, I forgot that was on the uh, tonight. Well, it'll be on Hulu tomorrow. So. Mm. So. Every. Guaranteed, almost every person you know collects pops. So you got people who collect every single pop that they can get their hands on, and then you got some that will collect ones that work for them. You know, so and, and I totally get that. I would do that. I collect the type of pops of characters that I like. You know, not the entire series or anything like that. So i think over the summer i had just i got an email from hot topic about upcoming pops i went in and i ordered um and i showed it off the harley quinn uh from the suicide squad of her in the red dress great movie by the way but there was also i don't know if you saw but they now have dc bombshells uh pops yeah i've seen them they actually have one of death and i really want it i went out and I pre-ordered the Harley Quinn pop. Of course you did. Yes. Nice. I actually ordered two. One is for a friend. And I'm sitting here thinking, shit, I should have got the Black Canary one. Because she did uh, Bombshell's Black Canary. I'm actually going to see if I can go on the website and see if I can find it. And just order it and be like, here you go. Two for one special. So. Is that from the... Like newest animated series, I guess. No. Suicide Squad. No, I mean that one. Yeah. No, there's a series of DC drawings called the Bombshells, where they're oh. like, yeah, fifty style. So. Yeah, because I, I remember seeing a uh, you know, screen caps of of uh, Harley Quinn and Poison Ivy like looking like pissed at someone and they're holding mugs and uh, mm-hmm. Poison Ivy says think like think green humans make great fertilizer. All right, now that we got that out the way, let's get into tonight's story and stories. And oh my freaking God, you know, that's all I got to say. It's 
COVID at Anime NYC. I, I, well, I, oh I, boy. I don't even think I should actually read this whole story. I'm going to summarize this. What we know is that the man, I guess, Patient Zero with the, Om, uh, with the Omicron variant went to Anime NYC with 35 friends. I'm going to assume 35 friends that he met there and so forth. Now, he went to other places in New York City as well. So, right now, people are freaking out and they want to blame him for bringing this variant to our city. I have seen people post wanting this person's social social media information. Oh, for fuck's sake. I just want to say that it's not his fault. He was He's vaccinated, and he got the booster shot. He didn't know he had it till he felt sick, okay? He may have gotten it from somebody else or something like that. That's my assumption. The only way he could have. Fine. It's one thing if he was, uh, you know... One of those anti-vaxxers, anti-maskers. That's one thing. Then, of course, find his contact information, dox him, do whatever the hell you want to do. But in this case, you don't do that. Because he honestly did not know. He took care of himself and he was sick for two days and that was it. As of right now, there's anywhere between five to seven cases of the Omicron variant. And who knows? That variant might just die right out. Yes, there are new cases of COVID happening daily, but it's not the Omicron variant. It's the standard, the Delta, the mu- it's the other ones. Those are the ones that we're still fighting, where if you haven't gotten ma- uh, vaccinated yet, what the hell are you waiting for? Go get it done. <sighs> Basically, And people wonder why conventions were... On hiatus for such a yes. long time. And people and now people are still saying we're not ready for conventions. They shouldn't be having them. And you want to know something? I obviously agree. I agree. We shouldn't we are not ready for conventions. But because of the numbers of people getting vaccinated and numbers going down, mandates are being changed, which affects contracts between uh venues and event planners. So they have no choice. And then for some conventions, if they pay the penalty fees to cancel the contract, it can bankrupt the convention as a whole. Case in point, look at MAGFest. They canceled and they were out They were out a lot of money. They had a fundraiser to make the money back. Let's be real. If all the conventions in this country canceled and paid the fees out and had a fundraiser to make the money back, I guarantee you, less than 30% of those conventions will come back because there is no way all of us can support and fundraise these conventions to have enough money to continue running. But but that's where we are right now. And also, as I said, I am, I'm not surprised by any of this. I, I really am not. Because if you've been following our show, We have been talking about this for weeks. I encountered an issue like this at PoochieCon. We talked about this happening at DragonCon. A friend of mine told me about this happening at a steampunk convention where three people were found positive at the show. We're at a point where common sense dictates that after every large event, whether it's a convention or your work, whatever. Go get tested. Three to five days after, go get tested, you know? And and I understand that for some people, it's easier said than done. Because, look, I live in New York City. I can throw a, a, a rock in any direction and find a place where I can get tested. For free. Outside of New York City. It's not that easy. I have a friend who works two jobs. For her the closest place to get tested is the ER. She doesn't want to be there for three hours. Which I completely understand. 
And now the thing is, a lot of people are saying, well, it's been two weeks. I'm fine. I want to say, no, you are not. Even though if it's been two weeks. It could Just be- because you're not sick doesn't mean that you're not contagious. Exactly. Uh-huh. There are people who are asymptomatic. So, you know. The thing is, if if you're going to, you, you've got to, you've got to do what you need to do in order to go and have fun. Right. This isn't, you know, three years ago where you don't have to worry about anything except, you know, con crud. Not that con crud is great, but, you know, you know, it's not COVID. In these times at this point. If you're going to be hanging around a bunch of people, you know, okay, you're vaccinated. Okay, you're not vaccinated. Mm -hmm. Either freaking way, go and get tested afterwards Mm -hmm. because you don't know. Mm -hmm. And the fact of the matter is, you know, a bunch of people, oh, this is just going to be like the flu and there's going to be a bunch of variants. That's all well and good. But nobody wants the fucking flu either. Exactly. Yeah, pretty much. There really isn't a good test for, you know, colds or the flu or something like this. Mm -hmm. At least with COVID, there's a fucking test. Nobody wants to get sick, whether it's a cold or the flu or COVID. So if you can test yourself and say, hey, I'm sick, I'm contagious, let me not go to, you know, Nana's birthday party. (laughs) You know, l- let me go ahead and not go into work and contaminate everybody I come in contact with. Right. You know, do the do the smart thing. You know, I I really don't care one way or the other. Va- you know, I I'm completely for vaccination, and mm-hmm. I think it should definitely be something that everybody does. But even if you're not, even if you're one of these people that, uh, you know, it's it's fake, whatever, do yourself a favor and just go and fucking get tested. Yeah, I'm at the point where if you're going to give me grief about wearing a mask, go fuck yourself. If you're going to give me grief about getting vaccinated, go fuck yourself. I am not dealing with you. I will cut you out of my life and continue walking. I have done that to multiple people and I will keep on doing it because I am not going to waste my breath on you. I look at it this way. Vax it or casket. Simple as that. Yeah, it is kind of I'll, sad that to see people, to hear stories of people who were, you know, as they were freaking laying there dying, even like their last breaths, they still deny that they had COVID. I'm like, you, you sad motherfucker. You know, what, what What hurts me are the ones that are dying, but they got vaccinated and everything, but it, 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 they, it, they got it anyway, you know, or they were in the process. Those are the ones I feel bad for because there are some people who are still deciding, but they're still scared, and this, which I understand. The ones who sit there and say, this is all fake, fuck y'all. Hell, they're yeah. trying to pass a law and I, and I shared this on, on my personal Facebook um, a while ago, um, earlier today. Uh, they're trying to pass a law that the willfully unvaccinated should pay 100% of COVID hospital bills. And I'm all for that. If you don't want to get vaccinated, you should lose your job. If you don't want to get vaccinated and you get sick from COVID, you should pay your own bills. You should be put at the bottom of the line for triage, okay? That's exactly how I feel. And I know for some people, I'm coming across pretty harshly, but I don't care. Again, I almost lost a friend to COVID. I know people who have lost friends and family members to COVID. No, I'm not dealing with that. Simple as that. And if you don't like it, there's the door. And now that we got that out the way, we're going to kind of readjust things, kind of get back into a more of a chill, happy-go-lucky-esque train wreck mood as Ari tells us about XL Saga. Well, this is this is going to change gear so badly it's going to burn out the transmission. Mm. The January 2022 issue of Shonen Nagoshi Young King Hours magazine revealed on November 30th that Koshi Rikuda will publish a new 60-page one-shot chapter for his XL Saga Maga. 
on December 28th to celebrate the manga's 25th anniversary. There'll be a cover opening page and then manga will feature on, will feature on the issues front cover. Rikudo posted a photo of the magazine announcement on his Twitter account. He launched the XL Saga in Young King Hours in 1996 and ended it after 15 years in 2011 with 27 completed book volumes. And there was an anime series from, that ran from 1999 to 2000. The manga story centers around a secret organization called Across. Believing the world is corrupt, Across aims at world domination with only two hapless agents named XLXL and Hyatt. Shenanigans ensue. Mm. <laughs> it's another one of those animes, let's just say. I actually have XL Saga on DVD or Blu-ray, one of them sitting behind me. I just got to get around to watching it. I, I, you I, and me both. I, I've picked up series that are like, because they were on sale and also, this is something I should have watched, but because I caught a good deal on it, I'm going to check it out. So, you know. I love XL Saga. I still want to cosplay from XL Saga. Who would you cosplay? Hyatt. I could see that. <laughs> I don't know if you know this, but the voice actress for XL, Jessica Calvello, she blew her voice out on the first episode uh, uh, voicing XL. That does not surprise me at all. Well, that sucks. Yeah, if, if anybody has ever actually watched XL in Japanese, and in English, Excel does nothing but scream. <laughs> if I'm not um, mistaken, in the Japanese, Excel is voiced by Kotomo Mitsuishi, aka Usagi Tsukino. Oh I boy. think so. Mm -hmm. But yeah, so it, it's it's definitely one of those that you can see why somebody would kill their voice doing it. Now that we move along, we go into your fandom there, huh, Mako? Uh, yeah, so my fandom there. Um, Uisei Yatsura, they are actually rebooting the... Rebooting um, a project for a reboot of the opening theme song. I think we kind of talked about this on a prior episode. Um, they were doing a bunch of stuff. It is, you know, coming up to mm -hmm. the anniversary, or I should say it's just passing the anniversary. Um, but Lum No Love Song is the first OP theme song for the TV series, um, which uh, has fans still uh, all over the world, even 40 years later. A reboot project of the song has been launched as the 40th anniversary of the anime. Nice. Um, the song was released in Oct uh, on October 21st, 1981 by Yuko Mats Matsutsani um, and was used as the opening theme for the anime for two years from its first to 100th episodes. It was enthusiastically received by the anime fans of the time and won the Anime Song Award in the fourth Anime Grand Prix in 1981, wow. which was decided by the votes of readers of the Animage magazine. Um, so the song's original composer and arranger already digitally released a self-cover version of the song titled Lum No Love Song Reboot on November 17th. She says, it's been a long time since I've released a new song. Everyone involved in this project is excited and something interesting is about to happen. It's also the 40th anniversary of Lum No Love Song. So I did a self-cover by myself. I'm so thrilled. I'm sure it'll be great for everyone who listens to it. Thank you. A remix project by artists from all over the world has also been launched. 
on December 8th, the first EP of the remix, remix project, Lum No Love Song Reboot Mimics, Episode 1, uh, that was um, put out by a couple of different people. It was remixed by uh, Hidefume Kenamoche. Um, uh, I guess that's Thrasic. Mm-hmm. Um, who's a track master, extremely popular in China, and Limited Toss, who is active in the Osaka Underground. And it's going to be, um, that actually will release tomorrow and release digitally. A second EP, which obviously is going to be episode two, is being done by Tofu Beats, up-and-coming music producer Tiwon from South Korea, and Skytopia, who absorbs a variety of music and develops his own world. Mm. That will follow on January 11th of 2022. And yeah, so I mean, I'm looking forward to it. Uh, There is a lot of stuff coming out for the series. Again, it is the 40th anniversary this year. Um, so they have been doing a lot of stuff coming up to this. I know, uh, I ended up getting a couple of things when, uh, my friend was in Japan, Mm -hmm. um, including a Lum plushie because, you know, Lum is best girl. Uh, yeah. (laughs) Yeah. So, I mean, I'm, I'm excited to see what they're going to be doing. I'm hoping that all of this, that they're doing that they're coming up with because it's so celebrated because it's, you know, gaining in popularity again. I'm hoping that this means that they're going to do something, whether, you know, it's a one shot manga, which is really popular now, or, you know, maybe new art, something just to, you know, continue the celebration of the 40th anniversary. I would maybe a nice two hour animated film that could work. A new animated film for it? That would, yeah, that would work. I, as I was saying before to somebody, much as I hate Inuyasha GT, I mean, Yashahime, <laughs> if, it gets the, if it gets the ratings, then you know what? Reboot Ranma 1 half. Bring us some more Yurisei Yatsura. It can be done, you know? Yeah, I mean... I'm not sure if you'd like a rebooted Ranma, because it, it, it just won't be the same as the uh, original version. Mm, I'm just worried. I I'm just know. worried they might do something like really drastic with the they, characters, you know. No, if if, if they no. did it like they're doing with um with how they did Fruits Basket or how they did Sailor Moon, and they base it completely off of the manga, you know, update the art style, do things like that. Mm-hmm. I think that doing a reboot that way, and then for Ranma here because you know I'm gonna hear him bitch completing <laughs> the series. Yes. I think that, you know, for a lot of the fans would be, um, I I think a lot of the fans would be happy with that. I think also if they continued with the live action, um, because I think the live action was kind of cute. It was. You know, doing something like that Mm -hmm. to celebrate that series. Um, There's a lot of ways that, that things have been coming together for a lot of different series. Um, there's a lot of stage plays. There's a lot of musicals. Um, you see a lot of variety in those plays and musicals as well, going to Kabuki or going to, you know, Takarazuka, um, things like that to bring the series back, but give it that difference so it's not going to be an exact telling. Um, I know it's all really popular in Japan right now, so I think it would be a really easy way to bring and revive the series. Mm-hmm. The only thing is they'd have to recast for Ukiel and Hapleside, but I don't think that would be too hard to do. No, I mean, with this one, you know, they you've got a 40-year difference between when the first anime aired and now I don't think they're going to be able to get any of the original voices back for, um, you know, for this series, if they were to do another actually, two, actually, two hour episodes. Hmm. Yes, actually for Ranma, they can. The 
except f- I forget her name, but the, vo- the the voice actress for Ukyo passed away a couple of years back, and the voice actor for Hapazai passed away. But yeah, but how many of them are even doing voice acting work anymore? Would you believe that most of them still are? They got to get work where they can find it. I guess no, 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 that's true. Even that. I think, you know, for a lot of them, this was their starter anime. And if they don't want to come back, it ain't hard to recast for somebody else. But I'm saying, it, my thing is this. As long as, um, as long as you get Kathy Yamaguchi, Megumi Hayashibara, and Noriko Hidaka, we good. Because let's be real, uh, Megumi Hayashibara is still working. I mean, mm-hmm. she's Jesse in Pokemon, or in this case, Musashi. Yeah. And now she's dubbing. And remember, she was originally Faye Valentine. So she's dubbing over Faye in live action Bebop. So that's true. That's true. Mm-hmm. Okay. So let's move along to our next uh, title here. And it's about um, Kazuna Eye. Wow. I wasn't expecting this. Looks like the iconic VTuber Kizuna I is going on indefinite hiatus. Oh no. According to her official website, it will begin after her online concert on February 26, 2022, titled The Last Live Hello World 2022. And a video posted to her YouTube channel, she refers to the hiatus as going to sleep indefinitely. But don't worry, fans can rest assured that future projects are in the works with more announcements to come. After debuting in 2016, Kazuna I went on to become a pioneer of VTubing, or virtual YouTubing, a phenomenon that captured both Japanese and overseas audiences. In her persona as a self-proclaimed artificial intelligence, she sings, dances, plays games, and more, both inside and outside her YouTube channels. As of December 2021, her main channel, iChannel, has over 2.9 million subscribers. Now, I think... That's She's true. always called herself a super AI. Well, true, you know. And has the personality of a ditzy 16-year-old. But, um... Hold on here, let me respond to Bonds of Little Six real quick. And yes, Bonds, we already discussed uh, Anime NYC, so... You can catch that on the uh, podcast. Now, I'll tell you right off the bat, I don't like VTubers. I absolutely do not like them. And it's not a personal thing. Now, there's only one VTuber I w- that I watch because I know the person behind it, you know. So, for me, that's an exception to my rule. My thing is this. If I'm coming to your channel, I am here to see you not your persona not your icon i i'm here to see you that's it now i understand the reasons why people want to v2 and i get it and i understand and i respect it it's just that's not what i'm here for you know and i get that Ugh, but pardon if, me but if i know you're a vtuber i i will pop in throw you some bits and i'll go about my way but that's just about it and if you really want me to support you, I'll open up a chan- I'll open up a, a browser and mute it, and I'll go about my way and do other things. But you know, I I just don't I just don't like it. I just want to see you for who you are, you know. But that's just me. Oh, Netflix! Oh, this one's me, isn't it? Yep, we're talking mm-hmm. about live action Mega Man at Netflix. So yeah, no, no whoa, Jesus, what is that? That's supposed to be a doll? I think that's a doll, yeah. Jesus, it looks so freaking creepy. Uh, let me I'm opening it up. Alright. That's not so bad. That's a it's it's well It's uncanny. Yeah. It's his it's his eyes, really. Yeah. He's not he's not human, but he's not a robot either with those eyes. <laughs> mm. Anyway. All has been quiet in the live action Mega Man movie front for a while. I didn't know that it actually existed. Same. But an update to the production company, Super Marche's website, recently came through with the idea of where it will be landing. 
while it might come as no surprise given Chernin Entertainment's first look first look deal with Netflix, it appears the adaptation is indeed heading for Netflix in the future. Uh, Henry, Henry Rell and her in-house partner Aurelia Ross Stress maintain an active development state. Features in the works include an ad- adaptation of Capcom's Mega Man for Chernin Entertainment and Netflix, which they wrote and are directing. Nemesis, based on the Mark Miller com- comic, an-, an adaptation of Edward Abbey's novel The Monkey Wrench Gang, produced by Ed Pressman, mm-hmm. <clears throat> and Runaway, a family of veteran comedy based on a true story, screenplay adapted by Brendan O'Brien and produced by Matt Kaplan. Uh, Supermarket is the company owned by Catfish's Henry Just and Ariel Ray Shulman, were lined up to direct the Mega Man movie, which is being written by Matson Tomlin and produced by Masayoka. And other details are non existent. Oh, produced by Masayoka. Well, that means it'll tie into the bad Death Note film. <laughs> yeah, that, that Mega Man doll, it looks like someone's making a stop motion Mega Man. It's a Mega Man 11 soft statue. I remember. I still haven't played that game yet. Same. I remember years ago, somebody actually did a Mega Man. I don't know someone did a Mega Man fan film. It was okay. <coughs> but yeah, I, one where Mega Man's armor looked like a BMX gear, isn't it? I don't remember. It's been that long. But I'll say this. I would have rather have rewatched that really bad Sailor Moon uh, fan film take that took place in New York City than watch that film again. I am. I'm sorry, the what? Yeah, there is a live action Sailor Moon fan film that takes place in New York City. Uh, is the cast Americanized or? Yeah, but I will say this about the film: if you are a fan of Makoto, do not watch this film. It will piss you off. Yep. It will piss you off. What they did was unjustifiable and uncalled for. There was no reason for that. I haven't seen it or knew about it. If I remember correctly, you find out that her parents are divorced and dead. Well, I I knew they were dead. I just... I don't think they they said that her parents were dead in the in the series. Yes, they, they died did. in a did. plane crash. They died in a plane crash. That's why she's afraid of flying. Honestly, I did not know that. But still, still I think that the divorce part was like uncall, yeah, uncalled for, you know. But I will say they did put Ray working in an occult shop. That does make sense. I could have put together better general uniforms for the generals in that film. I could have. (laughs) I mean, honestly, the generals should have been wearing tactical pants and a tactical shirt. If not all the same color, all the same color, but like a a different colored stripe to represent each one. That's what that should have been done. That could have been as easy. But anywho, enough about that. Let's talk anime. Yeah, so... Ergo, the, the um, podcast. Hmm? Ergo, the podcast. Yeah. So, one of the most popular uh, Japanese anime chain stores is Animate. Mm-hmm. And they announced that they plan to convert the main store in, um, in Ikibukura into the world's largest anime shop. Ikibukura, but close enough whatevs Mm -hmm. Uh, planning the grand opening for spring of 2023 Um, the store is currently uh, that location store is currently the head office for the chain while also being one of the bigger stores in the country and along uh, it also has a specialty food truck in the plaza outside and a cafe in a nearby building the uh, their Twitter and website for the redevelopment mentioned that they're planning to center a 
uh, f- uh, planning the center to be full of entertainment that will make your heart throb, as well as being a place that connects people from all over the world that love anime. The current main store has not been announced to close for the redevelopment as of yet. And the spring 2023 date, uh, which is when the new store will be having its grand opening, is actually the 40th anniversary of that particular location. That's going to be pretty cool. Yeah, it, I like. I really, really wish that a lot of these stores that specialize in all of this crap would have shipping availability outside of Japan. Maybe they will with this. Maybe. I mean, it's it's a possibility, especially since they're looking at a 2023 date for reopening. Mm-hmm. Um, but like, I, I would really enjoy for a lot of these stores that are specialty stores like this to go out and, I mean, it, it does take a little bit to be able to set things up in other languages, Mm -hmm. but obviously anime and anime products are popular all over the place. Mm -hmm. So having it in, you know, a couple of main languages, you know, English, uh, Chinese, your normal Japanese and Spanish, Mm -hmm. even French and Italian. French definitely since um, France does a lot of um, animation and anime and, you know, partners with Japan a lot. Mm -hmm. Um, You know, doing something like that would be really, really nice for some of these stores. um, Because here's something. A lot of the online Japanese stores that you may buy merch from, a lot of them actually have people going out to buy some of this stuff and and turn around and sell it. Like I know J List does that from time to time. Ami Ami does that from time to time. Um, I know Otaku Mode. I think they do that too. But you're talking about Animate, where they order everything in. It's all there. So if you order from their website, it's coming from their actual inventory. Mm-hmm. Yeah, something like J uh, J List and Otaku Mode and stuff, they basically bulk order from these types of stores mm-hmm. to be able to sell to you know yep. various countries. They're- and then you have the proxy people, um, you know, that go into the stores yep. for you and shop for you, basically. Mm-hmm. Um, but. I I think something like this and being able to say, you know, they come out with a figure and you can only get it at these stores, it would cut down a lot on the need for bootleg Mm -hmm. because people all over the world would already be able to order it. The downside would be the cost of shipping, but you know what? And people would still bootleg it anyway. No, no, no. Yeah, yeah, well, yeah, yeah people but, would yeah. still bootleg it, but it wouldn't be because, oh, I can't get it. Yeah. It would be because they're dicks. Yeah. Now, <laughs> like I said, a the- lot of people, a lot of people, oh, I bootleg because it's not available in my country. I can't get it easily. Mm-hmm. That's what a lot of people give to those, um, you know, given it as an excuse on why they, you know, why they do the minifigures or why they, you know, do the garage figures and things like that. Mm-hmm. Oh, I can't, I can't get it. You know, it, it's so rare and, you know, the pre-sales, I can't do it. Being able to buy it from a website like this directly from the store and have it shipped to me, it cuts that out. Mm-hmm. So then you know that the bootleggers are just doing it because they're dicks. Yeah. Now, like I said, the only downside is the cost of shipping. Like, I like I can go on to Taku Mode right now and buy a couple of figures for forty bucks, and then drop fifteen dollars on shipping. But I have a membership, so I redeem points, maybe like twelve dollars worth that I can, and shipping is only three to four dollars. That's not so bad. The only time of course, ship- it doesn't it doesn't but, but, factor in other kind of shipping mishaps that could happen, like another uh, supply chain breakdown. Like God forbid, no, someone wait, wait, like, some- wait, wait, wait. What I was going to say to cover that, like Otakumo will email you and let you know what's going on. Like your package is being delayed for various reasons. Now, 
There are stuff on their site where the shipping is virtually pretty cheap because it's in their American warehouse already. So what I could see happening is, you know, Animate opens up and they start shipping from Japan. But as the sales increase, they can see they can start shipping stuff like in bulk to a warehouse in California and hire people to go in and pull stuff and ship it, you know? Uh-huh. It's sort of like what Best Buy does right now, because when you order stuff from Best Buy, a l- part of the reason why stuff from Best Buy's website gets to your house the next day half the time is because when you're ordering it from their site, you're not ordering it from their warehouse. You're ordering it from, like, the closest store to you, like, ship to home. Like, if I was ordering one for Best Buy right now, it would probably come from the Bay Parkway store, and I'd have it within two days, tops. So, it's like that. And I think I think it's going to be kind of cool. And now anime is freaking mainstream. I mean, like, hell, I was in Hot Topic Saturday, and I saw a Kakegurui uh, beanie. I'm like, that anime is popular enough for merch? <laughs> and I walked around to the other side and they had an Auron Host Club uh, book bag, like the little cute one, you know, one of those. They're still, shil- they're still cranking that stuff out? Yeah. Mm-hmm. The thing is, if this is something that I can't get anywhere and I'm going to have to go through a proxy anyway, mm-hmm. I'm going to be paying shipping, whether it's to the company itself to ship it to me or to a proxy to ship it to me. Mm-hmm. So, you know, for me, it doesn't matter. And the proxies that I go through, you know, shipping can be, you know, half of what I'm spending yeah. on merch. So, you know, I, I'm, I'm okay with that because I've already thought about that. And I've, you know, saved up with that in mind because I know shipping is going to be expensive Mm -hmm. however if they're doing bulk shipping to the states it does cut down on shipping pricing if they send one bulk shipment out at a time Mm -hmm. even if it is going to be split up into different places once it gets to the states yeah i mean imagine they send a box of like 1000 items for pre-orders you know and maybe that'll run them like twelve hundred dollars to ship you know that's not so bad like if you pay like maybe three dollars shipping but you know they they cover the cost of the rest or whatever you know mm-hmm. and as bonds 6 says i worked logistics for international shipping for a global brand it can be done and he goes i i got a hot topic cash card for a promo of 30 a moment you spend 15 you know that it can be done you know Now that we got that out of the way, we're going to come to the part of the show that y'all really stick around for. Meanwhile, in Japan. Uh, can I have the first one? Go for it. I'll take the last one. Okie dokie. All right, Ari, it's all yours. And let's see if Mako-chan cracks your skull with this one. A Japanese bus driver chased down a groper who targeted an 18-year-old girl in his vehicle. In the late afternoon on Friday, November 19th, 25-year-old Tatsunori Koko was at work in his seat. He was a bus driver for Mitet's brother's company in Nagoya. A little after 4, he pulled over to the side of the road for what he assumed was going to be a routine bus stop in Nagoya's Moriyama Ward. As with most buses in Japan, Passengers exit via the door at the front of the vehicle, but the 18-year-old girl who walked up to where Coco was sitting didn't want to get off, but to report a Chikan, or a groper. Mm-hmm. And another passenger, a man of 60, slipped past the girl, hopped up the bus, nonchalantly started walking away. It was him. Mm-hmm. Like, I had to... F- and the driver jumps out of the seat and chased after the man. When he caught up to the man a couple meters away, he informed the passenger that was coming that he had groped her. Like, I had actually bumped into her, he was trying to say. And he eventually admitted to the crime, saying, I wanted to see how she would react. 
Mm -hmm. So part of what makes catching groupers difficult is they often trick the vehicles crowded like the, like the guy at the bus stop. <clears throat> often by the time real victim, no, no, often by the time the victim realizes the contact is intentional, the Chikan has already gotten their jives and makes a getaway at the next stop. But thanks to the girl's quick willingness to come forward and and the bus driver's speedy response, they were arrested and taken into custody. And at the beginning of the month, Coke was presented with a letter of commendation from the Aichi Prefectural's Police Midor Moriyama Ward. The action of Chi Kans are truly unforgivable while you feel terrible for, terrible for the victim. For the sake of local residents, I want to continue making our buses when they can feel safe riding. Sheesh, how do you say here I come to save the day in Japanese? <laughs> mm. Don't need just keep going. That that was the end of the article. Oh, okay, sorry. But yeah, I guess like the guy should be lucky he didn't get his head he didn't get his head smashed into the window. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Good good guy bus driver. In this case, mm -hmm. Good guy Koga. Yeah, it's it's nice when you know you actually see people sticking up for others like that. Mm -hmm. I guarantee you if that had happened on a New York City subway, the, you know, he would have gotten his ass beat and people would have been filming it. <laughs> they wouldn't have bothered arresting him because what could like what could they do with him that he didn't already just catch? Well, Uh, yeah, you'll see him unconscious on the floor with a little handwritten note said, "I felt up some girl in the in the subway. There, wait, wait, wait. Don't there help will, me be, up. There will I be, won't learn anything there if there I will do." Be, look, there will be no notes. He'll just be beaten to a pulp, and some it'll be filmed, it'll be recorded, and by the time the cops get there, damage has already been done. Hashtag you get what you fucking deserve. Basically. <laughs> Ugh. So, Maka, you got the next one, right? Yep. Yep. So, um, it's important for everyone in today's world, especially kids, to be aware of the dangers of scams and giving out private information. But what do you do when the one asking for that private information is an official document from your school? That's what happened recently at a middle school in Tokyo's Narima Ward, which reached the attention of the internet. Um, it, the tweet states, excuse me what, this is so stupid and such a violation of rights that I have no words. On a leaflet that was sent home with middle schoolers that they were told to use to discuss house rules for social media and to turn into their school when finished, there's a section for them to fill in their social media password. What are they thinking? This is an extreme abuse of authority and an invasion of personal space. Many online have posted images of the leaflet in question, showing that this wasn't some simple typo. This is pretty blatant. Uh, our house rules for social media easy fill-in sheet. Usage time. I will use my smartphone and social media for blank hours each day. I will use my smartphone and social media until blank o'clock each day. Storage place. After then, I will put it away in blank. How it's managed. The password to my social media is blank. I share this password with blank, i.e. my family. The Board of Education has since responded to the controversy, controversy, saying that they passed out the leaflets to students for households to create rules for social media and asked the students to turn them back into the school to check that they were filled in. However, the Board of Education notified each school in Nareem Award, saying that students should turn in the leaflet without filling in the password section. Unfortunately, one school did not receive that explanation, resulting in 276 students turning it in as is. There were no reports of such a mistake happening in the other schools. The Board of Education has said that they will prevent such incidents in the future by deleting the password section, storing the leaflets that were already turned in, 
turned in inside a locked up location and returning them directly to each family. So far, they claim that no passwords have been leaked. Of course, that's a very strange explanation. If students were meant to turn in the leaflet without filling in that blank, then why was it there in the first place? If students were supposed to bring it back home again and then fill it in, there's no mention of that. And even if that was the case, writing down your password is what you learn never to do in Internet Safety 101, no matter what, anyway. Mm. Obviously, netizens were similarly confused and shocked. I don't understand why they asked the kids to turn it in in the first place. Their internet, their internet <laughs> literacy is lower than the kids is. Do not fill that in. Do not turn that in. Do not share it. We're taught not to leak our passwords, but as soon as you turn it into the school, it's leaked. Did internet literacy just stop progressing 10 years ago? The only correct answer is writing our house rule for social media is not writing my password here in the blank. Um, hopefully no irreparable damage comes to this incident um, and the Board of Education learns from their mistakes. They won't. Yeah, no. Mm. Yeah, you, you ever see like, like one like, it's like a scene in like some like, like shows or whatever where, uh, like a teacher is trying to teach basic, you know, computer functions to a classroom of kids who are all secretly playing Minecraft on their computer, and like doing all sorts of advanced nonsense like you wouldn't believe. That's what that's what this feels like. The fact that this happened at a middle school. And an Arima Ward section of Tokyo doesn't surprise me in the least. And I, only I will s- use my smartphone at, and social media for fuck you hours each day. I will use my smartphone and social media until none of your fucking business o'clock each day. After then, I will put it away in the principal's ass. The password, the password to my social media is fuck right off. I share this password with fucking no one. (laughs) That's the way I'd answer it. Mm. And for those of you who are wondering why I said what I said, for those of you who don't know, Ranma one half takes place in the Rima section of Tokyo. So again, that doesn't surprise (laughs) me in the least. And now we're going to get into our last odd story of the night. It seems that the Aichi police refunded over a million yen in fines to drivers who violated a misplaced traffic sign. How do you explain that one? Now, here's the thing. Japan can be a tricky place to drive in. And in fact, sometimes even the people responsible for issuing and enforcing the rules of roads can be confused. Now... For example, in an intersection in Sato City in Aichi Prefecture. Um, can I? No, I don't think I can do it. Oh. It's a bit of a mess because you have the main city road and a prefectural highway that intersects at a very sharp angle. On top of that, highway becomes one way on the south side of the intersection. And just to make things extra convoluted, there's a tiny conduit between the highway and the main road, creating an A shape, but that little strip of road is only a one way. So in other words, it's like driving in Jersey. (laughs) (sighs) Or DC, either or. Yeah, the Beltway is a dumpster fire. Mm -hmm. So what happened earlier this year in Aichi with an officer in Aichi Prefectural Police had said no and applied for a sign to be installed prohibiting right turns off of off of one of those roads. In August of this year, an official sign indicating that traffic could only go left or straight was hung, and for good measure, another larger and less formal sign was set up underneath, letting drivers know that right turns were not allowed in large print. To get your point across, you know? All right, so we have that. So since they put that up, 168 tickets were handed out to motorists who dared to turn right anyway. It wasn't until November of this year that another officer with the Traffic Control Division noticed the signs and realized they were a mistake. Road signs were a mistake. 
<laughs> the general rule is that at intersections between city streets and highways, cars should be allowed to access the highway from a right turn. That particular orientation of this intersection was apparently was not a factor, and as a result, the signs were immediately removed. As for the people who received tickets, the prefectural police officially apologized and promised to cancel the Dermot the demerit points and refund all the fines totaling 1.14 million yen, which is equivalent to $10,100. But netizens had some type of thoughts about the whole situation, you know, and they were kind of split across about the whole thing. Comments like it never occurred to me that some sign, some traffic signs might be wrong. What about the people who suffered more from the tickets? Like those who got their licenses revoked. How are they compensated? Even if the rule was mistaken, the driver still knowingly disobeyed the sign, though. Those demerit points affects people's insurance. Does that all go away, too? I would be furious if I got a ticket for that. But they did ignore a sign telling them not to turn right. Whether this is more of a matter of reckless driving or police negligence... It probably boils down to each individual case, so it would seem that the Aichi police are choosing to settle everything in one fell swoop, regardless of the circumstances. Nevertheless, anyone who's ever gotten a ticket would agree that the last thing you'd expect is to get a full refund and an apology for it. That's about as likely as winning second place in a beauty contest or getting a bank error in your favor. Only in Japan. Mm -hmm. I mean, mm -hmm. I mean that literally because in this country they put up traffic, they put up uh, red light cameras specifically so the the uh, municipality can generate money off of the uh, bullshit tickets. You know, they'd never like they they realized that they made a mistake to be like, oh well. <laughs> what there was a story there was a story in Britain where they came through, lifted the cars put lines underneath the cars, drop the cars, and then find all the cars. Wow. Yeah. That's some shady shit. That's shiesty. Yeah. That, wow. Yeah, so uh, the fact that Japan went, oh, you know, our mistake, here you go. Yeah, it really is only in Japan. Because, you know, yeah. you can say a lot of crap about what goes on there. They are some of the politest freaking people, and they own up to their mistakes most of the time. They're the most honest and honorable people out there, you know? Mm. I mean, yeah, some of them still do shady crap, because, mm -hmm. you know, they still have politicians and crap like that. But, you know, you always hear about a lot of them going, hey, you know, we made a mistake, here you go, or, you know, oops, my bad, here you go, or, hey, I stole this, I'm turning myself in. <laughs> and then you have the countries that, that adjust the, uh, that adjust the, the fine for your ticket based on your income bracket, so millionaires pay thousands of dollars for someone for some poor person might only take like 10 or 15 mm. huh, at least there's honor amongst some th thieves in Japan keyword being some now that we got that out the way shall we go ahead and wrap up tonight's show yes uh -huh. Wonderful. Let me cue up the music. Well, if you like the show, tell a friend. They in turn will tell another friend and so on and so forth. They're independent bloggers, independent podcasters. We do this for the fun of it. So if you have any questions about the show, drop us a line at podcast at animejamsession.com. Again, that is podcast at animejamsession.com. We're here to believe you. And don't forget, everything that we do on this show, we're just telling you straight up as it is. So we're being honest with you. Mako, what are you doing? What do you mean? That's how you doing the odd breathing on the mic? Odd breathing? Yeah. 
I didn't know I was oddly breathing. I keep hearing somebody like they're trying to catch their breath or something. I'm just like, I thought it was you. No. What the hell? Anywho, I guess I have to go back and check the recording and be like WTF. So anywho, don't forget to check out our website at AnimeJamSession.com where we have our weekly podcast. You also find anime uh, reviews, uh, convention reports, cosplay tips and tricks, cosplay interviews, editorials, and so much more at AnimeJamSession.com. And don't forget to follow our podcast on any podcasting app that you may use, like Google Podcasts, Apple Podcasts, or whatever. Just do a search for Anime Jam Session, and you will find all of our episodes. So check them out. Some good, some bad, some in the middle. So, you know, how we are. And don't forget to follow us on our social media, Anime Jam Session, on YouTube, Twitter, and Facebook. Follow us there so you know when we're going live with new episodes, when we have new convention videos up new cosplay photos by the way if you went to another anime con 2021 photos are up i'll be advertising in the groups and all that good stuff about it uh let's see what else do we have here and yeah and don't forget our tip jar um cheering bits for us we love that we appreciate that um there are links below to our stream elements and ko-fi accounts if you want to send money that way we appreciate that too. And if you are also a streamer or if you have an account and we're live, host us. We appreciate all the all the good vibes that we get from this. So it's really appreciated. So now we're going around the room. Last words, Ari. Uh, I'm definitely going to have to hit up a urgent care at some time in the morning because I've been like permanently clogged up for the last four days. The overnight shifts will do that to you and the cold. Have you been taking any medication? I I don't have any on me. All right. I think you should run to a 24-hour CVS and get some NyQuil. Possibly. Last words, Mako-chan. I am so looking forward to going to sleep, and I'm so happy I have Friday off. My last words... As I look behind me around the room of all the stuff that's pulled out, I really don't want to have to pack and reorganize this stuff, but I have to so I can have a bed to sleep in tonight. Well, that is it. End of list. We'll be back next week with a brand new episode, another holiday song, and then we'll have our Christmas special. So that's all the good stuff we have. So I'm Ranma. I'm Ari. And I am Mako-chan. Great fight, great night. See you next week. Good night, everybody. Night. Say good night, Mako-chan. Good night, Mako-chan. Perfect. Awesome. See you next week. of Anime Jam Session and AJS Productions. No fanboys and fangirls were hurt, maimed, shot, electrocuted, or pistol whipped in this episode. For now. The views, opinions, and thoughts expressioned on the show do not reflect the staff or the network as a whole. But we're still right, damn it! For transcripts of this episode, start typing. Check us out at AnimeJamSession.com and VogNetwork.com for more information about us and other programming. Jamatane!